What's up guys, welcome back to News Wave. It is officially the last News Wave of the year, and I guess the last News Wave of the decade for that matter. Of course, tomorrow we'll start January in 2020, and it looks like 2020 is gonna be a lot of fun. I'm sure Nintendo's gonna have all kinds of cool games, and we'll probably find out more about that in a direct, hopefully, in January. But then, of course, by the end of the year, we'll have new consoles to talk about and go over, and even the build-up should be a lot of fun. So I'm looking forward to uh, starting a new year, a new year here here with uh, some all ki all kinds of gaming information hopefully coming up. Uh, as for today though, we have a bunch of stuff to go over which includes Nintendo possibly planning something for next week and we'll talk about why there's already speculation for a direct for next week and uh, well it looks like at least something's gonna happen according to Nintendo's own site. And we'll talk a bit about the PS5 as Eurogamer and Digital Foundry seem to confirm some of the stuff we had talked about previously in a rumor wave that was kind of circulating online with a few chips that had seemingly leaked online with a bunch of information being gathered up and a quick update on Metroid Prime 4 that appears to show Retro Studios maybe trying to fast track this a little bit to get the game out sooner than we thought originally. As always guys, if you enjoyed these videos, make sure the like button does help out. You guys have been liking the videos quite a bit and it really has been helping them in YouTube's weird algorithm that no one actually understands. And as always, of course, if you're new here, make sure to subscribe down below so you can keep up to date on all the gaming news going on in the gaming world. We're gonna start with Corey Barlog today, who appears to be attending his first CES. He shared this on Twitter, and you might be wondering, why is that uh, Why is that in the news? Why is that a big deal? Well, next week, a lot of people are thinking after Sony themselves teased information about the future is that at CES 2020 next week, that they might have something for the PlayStation 5 there. This is Gore Barlog's first CES trip and people are wondering, is he showing up there to maybe talk about the PS5 somewhat? Maybe a game coming out? Maybe something he's experienced with the system, you know, to kind of talk about it at CES? That's it's possible, although I will also say maybe he just wants to go there and see all the cool technology. That's also that's also a possibility more more than likely. I think that's probably what's happening, because if they were doing the PS5 stuff there, they'd probably bring Mark Cerny in to really talk about kind of the, you know, the serious details about the system and what he's been able to achieve as the system architect. Although I guess Corey could be there to talk about a game coming up for it and maybe something really neat to tease there. We'll see though next week when uh, Sony takes the stage uh, January 6th to talk about Probably TVs and cameras, to be honest. Oh, also a big shout out to Untitled Goose Game because we had information shared now online that Untitled Goose Game has achieved the 1 million mark for copies sold. That is a big deal. For, for House House, that is a big deal. For an indie game at any time to reach that milestone, massive, massive congratulations to them there for Untitled Goose Game. And hey, I maybe that means they can do something else really crazy and off the wall creative. That's the thing I really like about seeing indie games achieve success like this. They don't usually start coasting at that point or, or coming up with basic ideas and even just doing a very basic sequel or something. A lot of times they'll get even crazier and try something else completely different. So I'm excited when indie developers and indie studios are able to bring in that kind of money because obviously it's more sustainable at this point for them, but maybe we could see something else that's just you know out there. I mean, we played it as a, a goose and we had a button to literally honk at people and it was very fun. It, it, it was a blast. It wasn't a very long game, but I mean, it was like 15 bucks and it was even on sale at one point. So I think for what it was, it was a really cool idea and I'm glad they were able to sell 1 million copies and counting, mind you, going forward. Oh, and check this video out because I saw this on Twitter, Nvidia UK, I believe, shared it out and it looked like real life. Like it looked like they were actually flying in a plane with a camera out the window, except one issue. That's Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. Now we're uh, expecting, it's in like pre-alpha, they're testing it, doing a bunch of things with it. It's actually going to use cloud computing where it will draw out the landscape below you and it will change and alter depending on, I, I guess, the real landscape. It's, it's really, really interesting. There was even an interview we talked about previously where you could find your house apparently flying around because I, I guess it draws real-time data from maps or just any data that's actually stored for landscape. What a cool idea. Now, I, I'm not really sure how all that works when you're offline, if, if it just downloads the previous version of the maps, or I, I don't know. But from what I'm seeing here, 
it visually it's stunning. It really is. Even with Twitter's terrible compression, it still looked really good. So uh, I guess it's coming out this year at some point. I'm looking forward to it, but I, I gotta be honest, I was kind of flight simulatored out a long time ago, but it might be worth checking out just for the visuals to see what they've been able to achieve here. And the idea of the cloud kind of reconstructing the landscape is kind of neat. And guys, with some of the quick news out of the way, let's get into the bigger stuff. Well, let's start with this Nintendo situation next week because we were alerted to there being some sort of maintenance taking place on Monday next week. For me anyway, I think it depends on where you are in the world. When you look at the page, I think it alters depending on your own time zone and date on your computer when you uh, check the website out. But for me, it's actually on Monday. However, you see this tweet here. This I saw this from Videl, Master of Hype, saying, apparently this is the first time the Switch is getting a maintenance for a console firmware update. Could it be maybe Switch version 10 will finally see noticeable updates? And could this potentially be the direct date slash week? We'll find out soon. Pointing to a future maintenance schedule that you yourself can check out on Nintendo's site, saying distribution of update data during the maintenance window, all network services will be unavailable for me it's Monday, January 6th, 2020, 8.30 p.m. Uh, to Monday, January 6th, uh, 2020, 9.30 p.m. Pacific time. So that that is an hour window where it's just going to be down, just in overall, the, and maintenance will take place. Now, I do wonder if uh, there is some major feature coming that they would have to shut everything down, work on it, and then bring it back up. And for the most part, I mean, Pacific time, 9.30 p.m., if you're on the East Coast, that's like, you know, going up to after midnight. They're trying to pick a time when I guess people won't necessarily be online, although you could technically do it at like 2 a.m. or something when most people aren't playing online in the U.S. there. And then, of course, it can change other parts of the world. For the most part, though, it goes down for an hour and it comes back up and hopefully... That means that there is something new there. Now, I want to stop for a second and say it is very, very possible that this takes place and nothing happens, okay? Like, it could just be for stability. Maybe your switch was falling over the day before and now it's not, right? It's just more stable. Uh, that's It's a very strong possibility and I don't want people to get too hyped over this because now it's being speculated on that this could also point to the next Direct. Like, the Direct could be next week. I don't know if that's 100%, and the reason I say that is because it's we're having like a, like you know the New Year's week now, and then people will probably get back into the office and really get back and moving next Monday. So I don't know if they would just immediately announce a direct and roll into it on like a Tuesday or Wednesday. I think if there's gonna be a direct, it'll be the I'm gonna say the second or third week in January. It's it is also possible it could fall into February. It could be a first week in February deal as well. But I do think Nintendo needs to start talking a bit about 2020. Yes, there's things like Animal Crossing coming up, right? We know that. Uh, we do, of course, know that at this point, anyway, No More Heroes is 2020 as they put that date out there. We have, we have Tokyo Mirage Sessions coming up. But going further than that, what's the big holiday game? You know, like that, that's always the question mark is what's, what could come out leading up to that in October or an August game. And then you got to think, think of the summer. So there, there's a lot of stuff that we'd have to figure out leading up to that. And of course, a direct will paint that picture that we expect to be coming up. But the maintenance stuff could be nothing. That, that's the biggest thing. Firmware update, sure. Maybe they have to fix some bugs in the background. A feature update, that is a bit more interesting. What if they show up and they add uh, messaging as an example. My biggest thing that I would like to see them do is revamp the eShop. I, I think that's needed badly at this point with the amount of games that have been thrown on there. You could have some fun with an indie section, right? You could do things to kind of sort it a bit better so stuff doesn't get buried. Out of everything, right now, believe it or not, that's what I would prefer them to do is to change up and alter the eShop so it's easier to navigate and discover. D uh, discoverability on the eShop is very poor. So a lot of things they could do there. We'll see though. Hey, next uh, next Monday night uh, or going into Tuesday morning even is going to be an interesting time to see if anything changes. Remember, they have just dropped firmware updates or even feature updates out of nowhere at times. So it's very possible they just drop it. It's not connected to direct at all. And all of a sudden we have some new features to look at or 
our, our switches just won't fall over as much. Next up, I quickly wanna revisit the PlayStation 5 rumors from last week. We, we talked about them in a video here on the channel more in depth, but it had to do with uh, some discoveries being made around chips that AMD was currently testing. And this was back uh, when, they, when they were really put out there and tested to when they had the information gathered was from like June, July, up until the other day when it was kind of all compacted and put in one spot. And then people started doing things like calculating the raw compute power and teraflops, which came out to 9.2 teraflops. Significantly behind, I would say, the Series X at 12 teraflops. There's a whole argument about, does power really matter, yes or no? Or to me, it comes down to games, right? Like that's the biggest, that's the biggest thing here. But it is a bit of a question mark when it comes to Sony and possibly their price point and what they're really focusing on versus what Microsoft may be focusing on here. Well, Digital Foundry Neurogamer did a little bit of digging and they managed to actually confirm some of this through some independent sources and even go a bit further into it. Probably the most interesting thing that I saw here was that not necessarily, I guess, the power, since these things can change. That They also stress this as well, which is good because there is a chance that what we're seeing now is something that they've been working through and they're trying to figure out the right frequencies they can get away with versus shaders and all kinds of stuff, right? There's a lot of things going on here. But I did like a, a bit of the, the deep dive on the possibility of backwards compatibility through different frequencies that had been tested that pointed to PS4 Pro and regular PS4 as well, because some games, of course, have PS4 Pro support and then others don't. They just have base PS4 support still. So the fact that they are also looking at that does give me hope that when the PS5 comes out, all PS4 games are just flat out backwards compatible. That's the biggest thing here. Like, right, like the fact they're testing frequency and it could be a hardware-based backwards compatibility flat out is good. And that's what I hope. I hope it comes out, they're like, hey, you can just take your PS4 Pro or your PS4, unplug it, plug the new one in, and then you're just off and running and that's it. You don't have to worry about, oh, this game's not compatible anymore. And the fact that the, apparently the first gen, we'll say first gen for now anyway, PlayStation VR is also compatible really makes me believe that they might just design the PS5 as a drop-in replacement for your PS4. But I am also curious about backwards compatibility going back to the PS3, PS2, or PS1. We'll see about that. But so far, it looks like, at least from what we're seeing, Oberon really is a test for the PS5. We'll see if they can get closer to the Series X around release. And hey, I mean, CES is coming up. Maybe they'll have something to talk about there. Next up, let's talk about Retro Studios. Of course, we know what they're working on now. We, we're still curious what they were working on before, or maybe even still kind of now, but we do know they're working on Metroid Prime 4. They, of course, took that job over after Nintendo and Bandai Namco, and apparently they were struggling with this game to the point where they had to restart development completely. Something was wrong. We don't know what, but we do know Retro Studios is handling it now, and I think that makes a lot of us more comfortable because they've dealt with Metroid Prime plenty of times now. So I do have some confidence in them to tackle this well, and it looks like maybe they're trying to get this thing done sooner rather than later, which could have to do with it restarting in development and possibly them saying, hey, we can get this thing done. I still think they showed them some sort of demo behind closed doors and Nintendo was like, all right, yeah, let's move on this. We'll move it over to them. They can get this done uh, better and faster, we'll say. And it looks like they, they could even be outsourcing some work to try to speed this up. Now, this was discovered by Doctray81 here on YouTube, spotting a, a posting on LinkedIn for an environment outsourcing review artist by Retro Studios. And the idea here is that position would be in charge of reviewing outsourced work and making sure that it's up to retro standards and requirements. Now, if you're outsourcing work as you go along, of course, you're just trying to get different things done maybe faster than what you'd be able to do in-house just because you don't have the, uh, I guess, enough people to get it all done quick enough. Or maybe you think you can just move it over and you can focus more heavily on different parts. The environment, environment artists just get environments done. I guess that is something that isn't as important as other parts of the game, especially if you already have kind of guidelines and what you want to do and you have somebody here who can review it to make sure it's up to your quote unquote standards. And Retro Studios, for the most part, it, I mean, they're good at what they do. From what we've seen, I mean, we hear that their project's canceled and there is some issues internally at times. And for the most part, what Nintendo lets them release is good. 
but I do wonder what's been kept behind closed doors that we never found out about because the, the, the word is that they've had stuff canceled at times, so uh, that's hard to say. It really is interesting to think, though, that if they're outsourcing environments and maybe even other things we don't know about right now, maybe, maybe this could be coming sooner than we thought. I still don't think Metroid Prime 4 is a 2020 game, although that would, that would blow my mind if it was. I think it could even be a 2021 game and not even a holiday. I mean, Metroid Prime 4 could come out like earlier in 2021 and that might even surprise a lot of people because then they would have to start talking about it soonish. Could they talk about it at E3 in 2020? Maybe. And in our last bit of news, let's talk about Dino Crisis but a fan-made Dino Crisis game, a remake that fans really, really want to the point now where about a team of five or six people are attempting to remake it in Unreal Engine 4. And I will give them credit. They're trying very, very hard to do this. And it does look like it is a fan-made game to, you know, put it politely. But hey, I got to give them credit. They're doing their best here. They put out a trailer. They put out uh, full information about what they're attempting to do in an update. And you know what? For, for what they have to work with, it's actually not too bad. Now, according to them, it will be free uh, on PC only when it is completed. It won't actually be going to consoles, most likely, because you'd have to figure out how to obviously move it over to consoles and all of that. It's, this is something that they just want to do because they really, really like Dino Crisis, right? They're fans of the game. And I mean, Capcom, come on. Yeah. You've got to see this, right? I mean, I'm sure, actually, I'm sure they see this project and there's a chance they might shut it down. And, and if they do, hopefully that means they are working on one themselves. Okay, so keep that in mind. If we talk about a cease and desist on this later on, it could be because Capcom might be working on their own right now. And that's what a lot of people like to believe, right? Oh, they're going back and doing Dino Crisis. Well, we at least see a fan-made Dino Crisis attempting to work itself out here. They say they're about 40% done, so they still have uh, a ways to go, I would say, looking at it. But it's a, it's a cool idea. Idea and it, I mean, it looks pretty good for being a couple of people trying to make this an Unreal Engine 4, but check out the trailer. It's down below in the sources and uh, let them know what you think on their page. And we'll finish up with a comment of the day as you're seeing here. This is from Let Tice saying, don't rush Bayo. We rushed Kingdom Hearts and look what happened. Platinum is the best developer in the game right now. Let them be. I, I think the, the thing about Bayonetta 3 is people want to believe that it's on track and it really is going that smoothly. And in a lot of our minds, we would see gameplay or even another trailer. We'd see something more about this game than what we've seen so far, if it really is going that smoothly in terms of development. Now, there's also a chance that they are trying something a bit more ambitious than what they've done with Bayonetta 1 and 2, which is what, again, speculation is leading people to believe, is that there's actually a lot more going on in Bayonetta 3 than the first two, to the point where it is just taking longer to develop. It's also a possibility that they really weren't that far into development when they showed it at the Game Awards, and we found out about it closer to the start than even the middle or the end at this point. So I don't think anyone wants to rush the game. I just think they want to have some confirmation that it really is going as well as everyone keeps saying here. And ladies and gentlemen, let's go do it here for News Wave. If you enjoyed this video, guys, hit the like button. It really helps out. If not, hit the dislike. Leave comments down below about everything we talked about today, whether it's Retro Studios and Metroid Prime 4. Do you think that's a 2021 game or do you think it's like one of the last games on the Switch. Also, what about Nintendo next week? Are we getting some new features or just a basic stability firmware update? Thanks guys for watching and I'll see you next time.